Well, the Shane Van Gisbergen story, huge news here. I mean, ever since he won in Chicago, of course, and then uh, his top 10 finish on Monday. And now it appears more than likely that he's probably going to be at NASCAR full-time next year. What do you know? Yeah, well, w- whether it's NASCAR full-time or that's part-time full-time and he does a, a little bit of other stuff, I think is yet to be formally decided. And it's a, you know, it's an interesting thing. You, you, you would think in the world of sport that, you know, if you're someone of the talent of a Shane Van Gisbergen, you know, you just go straight to the top tier. But the, the absolute uniqueness of oval racing... You know what it's like, Martin? I'm trying, I'm trying to think of an analogy. You know, it's, it'd be like being a, a Melbourne Cup winner as a horse and then thinking that horse will be good enough to go and put on a trotting track and win the trots. It, it, it just doesn't work like that. And there's probably no more unique form of motorsport in the world, maybe ice racing, uh, other than running around on an oval. So what Shane knows he needs to do is go and spend some more time next year on ovals and maybe, I don't know, maybe he does a part-time NASCAR gig, but, you know, there's the, the secondary series, the Xfinity series, and there's the truck racing like we saw, where he can just start to learn a lot of his craft on on ovals. So I think that'll probably be part of the story, Martin. What has the reaction been to the comments that he made on the Dale Jr. Download podcast? Now, whenever I whenever I read, you know, these things, I always think, oh, I need to go and hear the audio because I need to hear his intonation. I need to understand, the, you know, the, get that context of how he's explaining it. The way it's been reported is that he's heaped into supercars, but I'm, I'm not kind of reading it like that. Look, he's been grumpy this year, Larko, and, and you know that, and we've said that, and he's had frustrations and things like that. So... You know, I'm not so sure that he's really hacking the sport. I just think that he's speaking his mind about it. Would you Would you agree with that? Yeah, look, Shane's never been much different. You know, he sort of, he just dumps what's on his mind. I don't think he overthinks that stuff too much. Um, yeah, I, I don't read too much into it. You know, it's probably a little disappointing, some of the stuff uh, that he says. But, you know, he's he's got his eye on a, on a bigger prize on the other side of the world. And I, I, I agree with what you just said, mate. I just think... Shane has been uh, frustrated driving the Gen 3 car this year. That's been quite obvious. Um, you know, whether some of that's the car, the, 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 the lack of downforce on these cars now, or, or we've seen that issue with his chassis this year, his own chassis, that he's been really... And, and, and I don't think enough people have picked up on that. That's really agitated him. You know, we've spoken about it in the telecast. I've watched it firsthand, mate. I stand right there, you know, five feet away from him in the in the garage and I saw it the last event there, sorry, at Townsville which really surprised me uh, really surprised me where he was so frustrated with it, he went out, had a little bit of a, a, a bad qualifying session and he got out of the car with like four minutes to go in the qualifying session and I went, wow like, he, he then got back in and went out and, and, and did a lap but I've been watching this frustration so they put him in another chassis um, another chassis they had there, Gen 3 chassis, complete different car uh, at Sydney Motorsport Park, Park, and he got his mojo back. I mean, he was just in magnificent form again. So I actually think, Martin, some of that frustration that we've seen from Shane this year has been born out of what's been agitating him with his chassis. Now, I believe they're going to now leave him in this newer chassis again this weekend, I believe. Uh, so that might be part of it. And... Um, yeah, look, we're certainly not going to sit and bop down on a few of his comments there. You know, I'd rather just watch him get on the track and get on with it. So do we do we, do we we assume or can we assume that this is his last year, those supercars, that we're not going to see him racing at all next year? Yeah, he's gone, mate. I mean, it's it's now formally announced that... Because um, he did sign... He signed a new contract at the start of this year for two more years with Triple Eight. Um, and to their great credit, Jamie Winkup, uh, the... The, the majority owner of Triple Eight Racing is, has allowed him to, to flourish, as you often do when it's a good young talent. I mean, he's he's won three supercars championships, a couple of Bathurst. So, you know, he's he's done everything he needs to do. You know, we all want to see him go onto the world stage. He, he's he's good enough. Uh, so so mate, it, it's done. They've released him from his contract. That's formalised, and now it's just been announced that Will Brown will be leading leaving uh, Erebus, uh, and sitting next to. Brock Feeney at Triple Eight Racing for the next three years. So that in itself is very exciting as well.
Mark Larko Larkham is with us, provides such brilliant um, in race uh, coverage and all the technical expertise you bring. I, I absolutely adore you, mate, watching your bringing us the supercars. Just in terms of losing both Finn Ginsberg and Anne McLaughlin, you know, over the years we've had great personalities Ambrose, Murphy, I don't know, I, you know, this Scaife, you know, uh, Tander, Lowndes, Wincup. These two guys, not just great drivers, but they also what they bring on and off the course as well, magnetic personalities and things. So is it now down to your Browns, your Kostikis, your Brad, your Brad um, Feenies? Are these the new generation? We're at that stage, aren't we? Well, it's funny you, you ask, Martin, because this weekend I'm working on a piece right now. We're celebrating 600 rounds of our championship. Wow. 600 rounds. I mean, that's just magnificent history. Since the 60s, where it all started, uh, at a circuit called New Bar. Uh, just outside of Orange in New South Wales. And this is going to be our 600th round. And so all those names you just said, it's, it's interesting because to go to your point, as a consequence of putting this piece together, I'm working on you know some of the, the biggest names, the, the iconic cars, the big rivalries. You know, But who, who are the icons? Who are the faces of the sport? Who are the people that have made the sport recognisable? And you, know, you do go back through Moffat, Brock, Johnson, Richards, um, you know, McLaughlin, SVGs in there, Scaife, Lowndes, Ambrose, Murphy. I mean, it's just a great list of great attributes, and it does keep changing. And I actually think we're really lucky at the moment. Feeney is a great young kid. Not only is a talent behind the world, great personality. Will Brown has the most infectious personality in our pit lane, bar no one. Uh, Brody Kostecki is the guy that doesn't care who you, is, who you are, just get out of the way. So he's a bit of rough and tumble and a real Aussie bloke that you'd love to have a beer with. So we are very lucky we've got those sort of things. And Shane's a different character. I mean, Shane's this, he's a quirky character. We know that, which which that in itself for me makes it interesting. And yeah, the, so the comments he made as you talk about, it's those sort of things that make Shane kind of what he is. And and, and, and I think in a weird way, that's why we, we like his personality. Because if, if everyone comes from the same cookie cutter, well, that ain't, that ain't too interesting. And, and they'll get used to him over there pretty quick. So, yeah, we are at a changing of the guard, no doubt about it. Wink up's gone. Um, you know, some of those big names you talk about, Lowndes is at the tail end of his career, and we have got a new generation coming through, and that in itself is exciting. What does he leave as a legacy in terms of the supercars, Shane Van Gisbergen? Uh, what does he leave as a legacy? Well, you know, we've touched on it before, Martin. I, I, I've got to be honest, I've never seen a, a driver, and, you know, and, and <laughs> funny, eh? most of my Kiwis, I mean, I would have said this about Scotty McLaughlin. You know, it's as good as it gets. Um, Shane, and you know, God knows I would have loved to have seen Scotty here and those two guys duke it out for another couple of years because it was just getting hotter and hotter. But Shane's not just got this remarkable ability behind the wheel, and I'll tell you listeners again, you know, as a, as a great talent, and I can only put it down again to the... The circuit you have over there and the junior system you have over there that gets kid in carts in Formula Fords and, and go to some of those fantastic but gnarly circuits you have over there that just trains them up so well. So the, the, the ones that are identified and come out and are skilled are really highly skilled. So put Shane at the top of that tree. And to get your point, I've never seen a guy that has an ability to feel the tyre to the road so well. And I think that's why he's been agitated with this car and his chassis because his level of feel for the car is so fine, he feels what other drivers don't feel. Right? So that's a real attribute, but it has hurt him on occasion. But man, when he's in the window, he feels that tyre, and I've said it to you before, Martin, he has this remarkable ability to do faster lap times than everyone in the field, yet use less rubber than everyone in the field. And that, I just, that does my head in. That's remarkable. And then add to that, and you'll hear Roland Dane say it all the time, and I watch it firsthand. His racing brain, his ability to read the track, the strategy, what those around him are going to do, how his tyre degradation is being managed, where his fuel's at, where the race is at. His ability to read all that, adjust his anti-roll bars and his brake bias during a lap more than anyone else, move his car around, is just remarkable. So he... For me, Shane personifies the type of sports person that was built just to be a race driver. He is never going to be a real estate salesman, that is for sure. A race driver, every day of the week. Born to be one. Awesome. Look forward to your coverage this weekend from the bin, mate. Yeah, can't wait. Looking forward to it. Devlin. You've got to love sports. The Platform. Mark Larko Larkin.
I'll keep saying it. He's the best in the business in terms of what he does. I don't know anyone that explains a sport to the layperson any better.